Guys, this game's amazing! God damn right it is. We have been waiting so long for this. I think I'm gonna cry. Zeus, calm your memories! I can't. People don't want to hear your pathetic sobs! They want to hear us gush about Resident Evil! That's right, because it's motherfucking Resident Evil 4. Definitely a game of all time. It's more than that, Tommy! Resident Evil 4 is the game. The Skyrim of survival horror. The standard that was set for all third-person action-adventure games. You wouldn't have your Gears of War, Last of Us, and especially Dead Space without this masterpiece. Just, ugh. And Capcom just had to remind us one more time why this game is still king. This game, this fucking game, was remade in such a spectacular way that we here at TBD can't stop foaming at the mouth over it. We played this back when it was released in March of this year, and to this day, we still gush about it every other week. Hell, every other day. It helps that the Separate Ways DLC is available now, and we've been having a super dope time with it. Check out our YouTube playlist, link in the description. That only served to give us more fuel to talk about this absolute masterclass of game design. So enough waiting and get ready for this beautiful ride called Resident Evil 4 Remake. Home sweet home. It does kind of feel like the old family home, you know, before it got invested with rats and other unsavory individuals. So familiar, yet different. I mean, look at this. Capcom knew you liked cheese, and they were ready for you. Don't act like you don't like it. I know what you did. That's because the original foundation of this game was so good. The entirety of the first six-ish chapters are so iconic that changing any of it too much would feel like a creature wearing the skin of your best friend and telling you he brought chicken wings to lull you outside for a bit of foreplay. Through that, from the layout of the map to the sequence of events, this feels as truly original as it can. However, it's far from a carbon copy. The atmosphere, fun extra bits of gameplay and lore, with all new extras that really show how much Daddy Capcom truly loves us. They even play with our feelings a bit by not having the goodest boy in the history of gaming at the beginning of the game, and they replace him with a dead wolf, only to reveal him later! Let's go! Hey, it's that dog! Not to mention that due to the new gameplay loop, the original segments are brought further to life by adding more enemies, traps, and way more ways to chew ass and kick bubblegum. And I'm all out of ass. Just in the gameplay department alone, they did nothing but improve upon the concepts they used in the original. RE4 did the exact opposite of RE3, which is perfect. Whereas that game wanted to pay homage to the original rather than recreate it, RE4 feels as though the exact same mentality went into creating it as it did in the original. This definitely feels like Capcom's divisions were talking to each other, with the parries, wall bounce combo, as well as a myriad of other random fighting gamey things. Throws are duckable highs as hell. The level design has been changed to resemble more classic Resident Evil games. It sections itself off into small RE style areas rather than one large one. I believe they started this in RE8 and it honestly helps the pacing. It allows for very natural rises and falls and tension where you can visually see where this area ends and the next begins. Every space is used phenomenally. The redesigned castle section of the story are stellar and help tighten the focus of this one. Going from an open area to a more enclosed space where at every turn anyone can and will attack you just makes the experience that much more frightening. It all brings it back closer to the survival horror roots of the original Spencer Mansion and the RPD station. It all resonates beautifully with the new mechanics as well. Leon's ability to move and shoot at the same time allows you to control the game at your own pace. You never feel like the game constricts you to one gameplay style over another, and it really gives you a sense of freedom in that regard. And don't even get me started on the godsend that is the parry mechanic! 
my honest contender for best change to any RE game of all time. The parry is implemented flawlessly to an already tight game. The fact that your knife is no longer an unlimited resource but has such an important combat function elevates it from a good change to an absolute necessary integration to enjoy this game to its fullest. I love me a mechanic that has such a big upside, allowing you to defend yourself early in the game against most enemies, but with the drawback of it being tied to your knife's durability and having a short window of execution. Hell, the hardest difficulty in the game makes it to where you can only perfect parry. That's all I do. Making that save just that much sweeter. Especially during some of the most dramatic times in game. Whether it's during your first run in with Dr. Salvador, the face off against El Gigante, or one of the tougher bosses that still leaves us with chills. Can we all just agree that the Regenerators should be considered bosses? At least the Iron Maiden should be. I mean, they can be mini bosses if you want. There's nothing mini about it. It's spooky. All of the enemies in game have been given a well-deserved glow up. Some have minute changes to behavior or attack patterns, whereas others are just great revamps of the original, specifically some of the bosses. The first two main boss battles of the game aren't too much different from their original counterparts. The Del Lago fight is pretty much the same, with the added caveat that it has a few more mechanics to it. The original fight had a set number of hits until the fight was over. In the remake, he can regain health when he dives under the water, and its head becomes a weak point due to more to do more damage. What? Is that the case? Is that real? Did I make that up? The entire area leading up to that fight it just builds up to this crescendo of excitement and fear. Because even though you fought Del Lago before, this creature is terrifying in this remake. Hell, I can't remember the last time I was scared of a salamander, but the RE4 remake definitely puts a new fear on the table for me. The Gigante fight is also dressed up in such a beautiful spectacle with the return of your favorite furball making a full dramatic return. One of the fights that improves significantly in the remake has to be the Salazar fight. Before, the diminutive goblin Count would take his left hand and stick himself to a wall for a lackluster shootout with you and whatever ammo you had left. Now, however, it becomes a thrilling duck and cover slugfest with a moving target that spews slurs at your general direction. While his fight might have changed to engage the player differently, you never feel like it's out of place for this game. They did add a little trick he could pull off for an extremely quick kill that, while funny, is impractical and will deprive you of a few healing items or a bit of extra cash. That's the fun of it though, the fact that you can come back and discover these nice little easter eggs. <laughs> just makes this game all that more fun to go through. Exactly, and the ultimate example of an enhanced boss fight for this game has to be Krauser. Krauser! This fight, holy shit, this fight. It takes full advantage of the removal of quick time events in favor of a more hands-on experience. The first time you meet him, it's an all-out knife fight! Ah! And holy shit does it deliver. Similar to being able to stop Dr. Salvador's chainsaw, or even the Garador's attack, given the full reign to face off against Krauser in a one-on-one -on -one fight, testing your now 10 chapters deep pairing skills in this game. You are thrusted into a close quarter fight for your life. The music and environment are sinister, with Krauser egging you on every moment, catching you in this every slip up you make. Impressive in its own right, considering it takes one of the most jarring parts of the original game and replaces it with something truly tangible that keeps you engaged, all the while giving the player a greater sense of agency and personal stakes. Outside of now having to save Ashley and possibly the world, now you have to take down your own mentor and the murderer of your newly acquired best buddy. Rest in peace, my guy. You will be missed. Anyway, now having defeated Salazar and gone through hordes of armed plagas, you come face to face with Krauser once more in one of the most unforgettable fights of this game. The team that put this together, the environment, and the music just brings you to the edge of your seat like it did in the original. I have lost count on how many times I have gone through the remake just to get to the Krauser encounter. The changes that are made here are incredible and cannot be stated enough. 
For starters, Krauser is now the only enemy following you through this maze of traps and gun turrets as he stalks you to the point of you not knowing if he is above you or behind you waiting with his knife. The more that you progress through this fight, the more deranged and angry Krauser becomes until you get to his second phase, and that's where things get crazy. This segment is absolutely fucking- Instead of y'all fighting on top of a pillar that is set to detonate, he chases you to the next arena while mutated. You have to run away from him in the dark. He'll fight in a cage-like arena that really lends itself to Krauser's ability because now he has both his fucking arms mutated and has completely lost his mind to the Plaga and the Los Illuminados. In the original, he was somewhat of a pushover because the knife in that game was really broken. But in this game, oh boy, let me tell you, he's a force to be reckoned with and not to be taken lightly. I really like this fight. Most of the revamped bosses have either had high quality improvements or they stay true to the original while updating with new mechanics, keeping the fast pace of the game consistent and engaging. Also, Sadler gets shot with a rocket and dies just like the OG. <laughs> Speaking of having things be like the original, the story itself receives a nice facelift. A lot of people would have you believe that this game is more serious than its original counterpart, taking away some of the more humorous lines. They would only be half right. The humor of the game is still there, but it's used more sparingly to keep the tone updated to the current Resident Evil. Leon himself is more in line with the more grizzled version of his dorky RE2 self and a lot of his humor comes from the attempts to be funny. Nighty night, night. Humor aside, Leon is still very confident in himself and his abilities, often letting Ashley know that she will be taken home safely and facing off against other villains with the same panache as he did in the original, just without the early 2000s cool guy attitude that was later given to Dante in Devil May Cry. This also matches closer to what Capcom portrayed him as in Resident Evil 6, which always felt kind of odd since my first encounter with Leon was in the original RE4. This also applies to Ashley, a character that before was always flagged as a bratty teenager and was kind of collectively agreed upon to be the worst part of the game. Now she's more of an afraid college student that has slowly come to terms with her situation, and eventually she adapts and becomes stronger for it. Her growth is encapsulated perfectly in her standalone mission where she has to face off against creatures of untold horror on her own to save a now-captured Leon. She scurries through corridors, dodging armaduras left and right, all the while frantically looking for the key necessary to free Leon. The capture now becomes the savior. This segment, unlike the original, has slowly become one of my favorite parts of the game, if not one of the more memorable. And like we discussed earlier, another excellent change to character is to Major Krauser. And as much as I would like to talk more about him, we do have to give some big respect to the changes made to Luis Sierra. Luis has to be the character that still feels the most like his original counterpart, but with more. You know what I mean? Absolutely. His role of the mysterious hand that helps you out when it's most convenient for him is completely fleshed out here. You feel his regret with every word he speaks and how he uses his very charismatic charm to keep you from thinking otherwise. Now instead of just a regretful scientist that worked for Umbrella Corp, he becomes a tragic character tied to the events of the entire Resident Evil franchise and the small Spanish village he hails from. Now with the weight of his actions upon his shoulders, he wants to try and work his way out of this disaster while helping Leon in any way he can. And help he does. Luis now extends that charitable hand to more than just the iconic cabin fight. He now tags along for a greater part of the underground section of the castle. The minecart section becomes a more intense set piece with his company, adding a layer of fear to the player instead of running through the section because of how badass Leon is portrayed. If you remember his end in the original, spoilers if you have never played this gem before, he is often a cutscene with you having spent no more than a few minutes with him throughout the entirety of the game. Now he's your annoying little brother in this mission to save the world, and just as you're about to really fall in love with him, he is stricken down before your very eyes. To say I was actually pissed at Krauser during that fight and bawling with grief at his final words would not begin to cover the masterful way Capcom had handled this character. Quote, Neither good nor evil can last forever. And so it follows that as evil has lasted a long time, good must now be close at hand. Miguel de Cervantes. Don Quixote. 
When this game was originally announced, we had a slight hesitation due to the sting of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Resident 3 missed the mark in many ways, not just removing content. The identity of the game itself was highly compromised due to all of the scenario changes that were made. This could not be further from the case with Resi 4. 20 years later and this entry in the franchise is still something that I run regularly. It brings me untold joy to go through, and now I can experience that joy over again. Thank you Capcom for setting what is now our personal standard for what a remake should be like. This gets the TBD official seal of Certified Gush. Yeah, Gush! Thanks for watching everyone, and we hope you two can gush with us about the game down in the comments. TBD out!